Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Vivian and so much has happened in the past couple of months in my career and we really have to catch up. I thought that I would introduce a new series onto my channel where I share more of my learnings and my career experiences in a much more casual, authentic and less curated way. I know that I talk a lot about my work in my like day in the life videos that I upload once a month approximately, but I feel like those videos are so heavily scripted because it's doing a voiceover over a bunch of b-roll clips and very heavily dependent on what I'm actually doing at work in that specific day. And there's just so many more things that go on in my mind that I almost just want to share with you all in a much more casual way. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy this new series and you get to know more about my career as well. The past few months I've been going through a transition from an individual contributor at work to now managing a very small team. Um, this is my first time actually managing people. I have done a bunch of mentoring before for new starters here and there, but this is really my first official time being someone's manager and having a small team of direct reports. I've spent the past seven years of my career, so basically from me starting my work to a few months ago being an individual contributor and over time I've realized that's where my strengths really lie. I'm really good at getting things done so this change in role has really been a big shift in both my mindset and my workload. If you are familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality test I have always tested as an ISFJ and more recently an ISTJ as I start to vocalize my feelings a bit more. So you know your detail oriented, focused, hardworking, people pleasing employee that can't push back on timelines. That's basically me in a nutshell. And because of that skill set, I felt like being an individual contributor came very naturally to me as I was just good at getting things done. I loved committing to deadlines. I love having a to-do list. And I almost thrived under deadlines and just getting the job done and almost wanting to go above and beyond every time because I'm such a perfectionist. But I've come to realize that as a manager, you have a completely different set of skill sets. You are now no longer doing all the work. You have to know how to delegate your work to your employees and explain things to them because doing it and explaining it are two completely different skill sets. I also feel like you need to be able to empathize with your team members to know where their strengths lie and where they want to take their career and just do a lot more like top down, big picture, creative, critical thinking and also really work on, I guess, working with different stakeholders across the business in order to improve like data literacy across your company. So for me, I've actually still been pretty hands-on just because my original role, like my original data science role was not backfilled. So I'm almost doing like a 50-50 split of still getting the work done, but also a lot more strategic, high level thinking. I've really, really challenged myself over the past three months to think a lot more high level, strategic, try to be more creative out of the box. And I do feel like I've made really good progress. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm also a lot more heavily involved in the product roadmap, the data strategy for my organization, given we are such a small company. And I keep reminding myself that this is just part of your career growth and discomfort is a sign of growth. Um, in terms of like managing people, yes, there is definitely a big element of imposter syndrome, but I feel like over time I've learned how to manage that and keep it suppressed. Um, I often find myself thinking, am I doing the right thing? Am I explaining this in the best way possible? And am I helping my employees or my team develop as best as they can? It is definitely a big responsibility and a big shift in my mindset, but I do feel like I'm gaining experience and confidence over time and I feel really happy of my progress in the past few months. Um, I've personally had a lot of managers in the past be extremely micromanage particular at like larger organizations. It's very hierarchical. Report back on your progress at the end of every single day having to stay back until a certain time, until they leave, not being able to speak back and push back on their ideas because whatever they said was always the source of truth. Um, and it's definitely not something that I wanna pass on to my team. So I'm really focusing on trying to develop my team members, understand what ticks them off, how they work best and how they slot into, I guess, our business's vision and making sure that the work that they are doing is actually helping the company, but also helping them grow as a person. So yeah, I'm gonna keep you updated on this. I am still pretty fresh in this whole space in the data leadership area of my organization. I know a lot of the time it's just me putting this pressure on myself as opposed to any of my leaders telling me that I'm doing a bad job. It's really all internal, but I'm also trying to channel that pressure and just, I guess, improve myself so I can finally come out of my shell. I'm definitely enjoying this change 
in my environment and I feel like it is taking my career to the next level. And another big thing that has been on my mind is the pressure to upskill and following on from what I just said, it's not like anyone is actually forcing me or holding a gun to my head to upskill. It's just this pressure that I put on myself as someone who ties their self-worth to their career and their achievements and is a perfectionist and wants to achieve the best possible outcomes. And not to mention the imposter syndrome that has come on from taking a more data leadership role in such a small organization. Upskilling myself is almost my own shield and my protection, I guess, because I just want to know what I'm talking about. It's completely in the mind and it's so unhealthy, I know. I'm trying to think about an analogy. It's almost like when you go outside and it's a bit cloudy, but you want to bring an umbrella just in case because it makes you feel comfortable knowing that you have like something in your bag in case it rains. Um, very bad analogy, but I think that's kind of where I'm at, if that makes sense. And I'm sure to like many of you who are also like data scientists or aspiring data scientists who work in tech, upskilling and constant learning is a big part of the job. It can be a pro because it definitely keeps you mentally stimulated, but it's also a con because you can't just learn one set of skills and expect that to get you through the rest of your career. The tech landscape is changing so fast, like two years ago AI was just this big fat buzzword, but now ChatGPT, OpenAI, they're like household names, this area gets so much funding, these new models are being developed almost every single day and it is crazy what world we live in. Um, I heard that there's like prompt engineers who are getting paid up to 300k just to write prompts, yeah absolutely crazy but the space is really changing so quickly. And I feel like as data scientists who work super closely in this field, we almost need to keep up. Otherwise we might just be left behind or replaced by other people. So in terms of what I'm doing for my own upskilling, there are two main areas. Um, the first of which is data engineering. Now this is more of a personal project for myself that I've been doing outside of my work hours. Um, reason being, we just hired a data engineer to join our team. And in all my previous roles, I have worked in the data science team specifically and in like much larger organizations the workload is a lot more siloed and the data engineers actually sat in a completely different function to my old team so there was really hardly any overlap unless you were implementing a model i have a very brief knowledge of like etl pipelines and all that but i just really want to know a bit more and just it's a personal thing my manager is not expecting me to know all the nuances of data engineering but i just want to know this space and having this new starter join is almost the pressure that i needed to upskill so I'm actually doing a three month data engineering course on Coursera right now, just to understand this space a little bit more in you know, like database management design and pipelines. Um, I've been doing around like 30 minutes a day outside of work hours. Um, it is pretty tedious, but I feel like it's just something you have to bite the bullet because self-study is never really fun. But I always tell myself that knowledge is power. And in the end, even if I don't use the skill set, I will come out of this becoming a much more well-rounded data specialist. And the second thing that I've been doing is learning a lot about generative AI. Now this is more something I'm doing during work hours. I'm sure you've all heard me yap on and on about this in my different data science and open AI videos. But for those of you that are new to my channel, um, I work at a growth marketing organization here in Sydney, Australia, and my specific team owns a platform that helps our clients better understand their marketing data. And right now we're working on a few product improvements and features which leverage generative AI to generate like faster and more accurate insights for our customers to help them better grow their business. Now this is as new to me as it is to everyone else, but because I'm in this like data leadership position, I almost feel the pressure to do my research, understand all these different models and how they're being used. And I guess identify like any opportunities, how we can use AI into our business and build it into our products for a better customer experience. And I guess like almost pioneering and championing this AI initiative to my business and helping everyone in the organization scale and use AI. Um, I recently subscribed to a few blog posts or newsletter articles, and I've been watching a bunch of videos on YouTube. It's honestly such a goldmine to upskill all these people putting out free content on like large language models, neural networks, how ChatGPT really works. So I feel like I've learned so much in this space already, and I'll be definitely sharing my experiences, what I've learned from all these courses and newsletters in future videos. So please stay tuned for that. I always tell myself that if you were able to explain something, then you've really mastered it. I read somewhere that you only understand 10% of what you read, but you understand 95% of what you can teach. 
To be very honest, I've had so many teething issues with using AI in the past few months. Um, just like trying to figure out how to write the best prompts, understand all the different models available, navigating data accuracy, which has been such a big one for me, and really testing the limits on what AI can do for the business. I spend a bunch of time on like Reddit forums to see if other people are going through the same struggles as me. And if I could summarize my personal experience and what I've read online, I would say that generative AI has so much potential in doing qualitative things, writing email, analyzing trends, writing blog posts. But when it comes to doing data calculations, it really struggles. And it also tends to hallucinate a lot. Um, I'm gonna put this screenshot up here, which really summarizes how I feel about AI in like some of our data tools right now. But I'm sure we are just at the very beginning of this whole AI journey. If any of you are also playing around in this prompt engineering AI space, I would love to know how your experience has been so far in the comments below. So if you please don't mind sharing how you found it so far. I'm sure this is just the beginning of a very long growth journey with AI and I'll definitely be keeping an eye out on this space as I anticipate so many more changes that we can't even foresee right now. I still believe that prompt engineering is really the future, so I really, really want to stay up to date in this space. So that is everything that I really wanted to share with you all today. I hope that this was a good mid-year recap and it helped you understand more about my work and some of my challenges and my frustrations that I don't always put on the internet. Um, let me know if this is a style of video you'd like to see more of. I would love to sit down and have a lot more real, unfiltered conversations with you all about my experiences navigating the tech industry as a first-time leader. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Bye!